Hey all, and welcome back to our coverage of the post-game of Xenoblade Chronicles 3. We promised you a Super Boss video, and here it is. <laughs> Spa didn't really care for the uh, future redeemed stuff, but, uh, uh, ooh, Jesus, look at that fucker. Yeah, I think there's going to be plenty to uh, see and enjoy in the base game, at least. We've got the Super Bosses up today, and there's five of them to take out. I would honestly say they're probably more difficult than the ones in Xenoblade 1 that you might have seen back during the Super Nintendo-thon. To start off here, we actually have something below level 100, which is new for the Xenoblade series in terms of super bosses. This is the Kilo Korn Grand Eps, oh. who in the Japanese version, its title is actually Million Horned Grand Eps, which is kind of raw. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> this is like the granddad of the crew. Basically, yeah, he's like the leader of whatever this species happens to be, so I'm going to be controlling Noah throughout most of this. Uh, there's going to be a couple points where I switch for reasons that we'll get to, but you're going to see Noah primarily using uh, Ashira's class because I just kind of thought it was the best for tankiness and damage output, but you're probably going to be seeing a lot of smash combos as well because that is the best way to get damage output. Also, no chain attacks, at least until the uh, level 200 super boss at the end that I promised Ooh. back during Future Redeem. Okay, okay, okay. Well, I'm just a spectator for this one, folks. I don't go anywhere near super bosses. I'm too afraid. I think you could probably take a few of these out if you had the right setup. Uh, that really is all it comes down to in terms of the super bosses, because it's more about the setup than the moment-to-moment -moment choices, at least until you get to the, like, 200 boss, because that one requires you to be, like, on your toes at every single moment. So. Oh, of course, yeah. And uh, probably the best option for Talon Art when Noah is a tank is, of course, the uh, Unlimited Sword Lucky 7, because you're going to be doing way more damage with this than anything else, so you're going to draw aggro no matter what. Not to mention you get a whole bunch of these launch and smash combos for free, basically. So I mentioned that the future redeemed bosses all have gimmicks, which I thought made them boring. Like, one just has an art that puts the whole party to sleep, and that's it. Yeah, I actually ran into him. Yeah, there's a few in the base game that are gimmicky, like this guy, as you might expect by the giant horns and, you know, his armor plating and everything, he has a really high block rate, which you can pretty easily negate with one of the accessories that makes it so every art that you cancel into uh, is unmissable and unblockable. Ooh. It will always hit no matter what. The caveat to that is, of course, if the enemy makes themselves invincible somehow, it obviously won't do any damage. Right. Uh, tell me a little bit about your character setup here. Like, are they using uh, their upgraded weapons? Like, what's their armor set like? Uh, well, I can tell you that uh, Mio is over there on Zephyr, so she's using the upgraded weapons. Uni and Tyon are on, I think, Medic Gunner, uh, Valdi's class, and... Uh, Sinifer, because, of course, Sinifer is kind of the only way you survive these battles, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Senna is on her default class, which I cannot recall the name of at the moment, but uh, that's mainly for the bonus that she gets to inflicting break, because uh, it makes it really easy to inflict break on these enemies that we're fighting, which otherwise would be mostly impossible, I'm not gonna lie. Some of these guys actually get up above 100% break resistance. Whew, lordy. And Lands, I believe, is on Incursor, as it is pretty much the highest damage output without being Seraph, which hurts itself to do damage. Uh, but that's one down. We're gonna move on to the next one, which is up at Cooley Lake. I pointed this one out when we were doing Teach's Hero Quest many, many moons ago. And did he so? Alrighty, what to expect here? I'm thinking a big frog, personally, but it could also be a bird. It is indeed the big flamboyant rainbow color bird. Uh, this is Peril Wing Ryuho, who in the Japanese version has the title Ryuho Wings of Disaster, which is once again pretty raw. Sure. 
you know, I'm not one to complain about translations and all that, but why are you sniffing us this time, guys? This is actually the hardest super boss for me, for whatever reason. It starts at level 100, and um, it, you might know that all of the super bosses in this game have an option to increase their levels and re-challenge them. That's how we get the level 200 super boss at the end. Right. Uh, this one actually maxes out at 160. Oh, yeah, sorry, it kind of just took me aback there. It's like, wait a minute, that, that, that's above 100, I can't count that high. Ryuho actually has a unique immunity that no other enemy in the game has as far as I know. It is actually immune to smash. Even if you launch it and try to use a smash art, it just kind of does nothing. I don't really understand it, but uh, it really kind of makes this fight a little bit harder because that's just a lot of your damage that's gone. Right, yeah. He also has just really strong arts. Like most of the bird enemies, it has the art where it can grab one of your teammates and throw them into the ground, or in this case, the water. Uh, and it does a smash attack on us, ironically. I think uh, some of the other enemies nearby have actually been aggroed, and so my party's off fighting them somewhere. Oh, so there's, there's two Ouroboros forms off to the side. <laughs> I'd actually recommend if anyone does want to try these to change the setting in the menu so that your party does not use Ouroboros forms on their own because what's going to happen is you're not going to get Senna using the attack that does break. You're not going to get whoever's on Sinopher doing their job as Sinopher. Instead, they're going to be doing their Ouroboros stuff, which is just not going to help you a whole lot. That was the uh, smash not working right there. Even with the lucky seven talent art, the smash just doesn't go through. Hmm. That's a little bit weird, just crashing into the surface of the water. It is a little odd. There is a spot where you can fight this thing over land, uh, but you've got to like walk all the way across the lake and then catch it over there, and I didn't think that was interesting for the video, so I just figured I'd fight it here in the water. Nah, mate, we need a little jellyfish off to the side as a whole derb, you know what I'm saying? Now, obviously, all of these are unique monsters, and so they have enrages as well. Uh, the special boost that Ryuho here gets for his enrage mode is that he actually uh, increases or improves his art recharge, so he'll actually be attacking even faster. And I feel like that's sort of common on these. The previous fight went by so fast, I didn't even get to mention it, but the Grand Depths that we just fought, the bonus that he has, that's a elite monster being killed by the rest <laughs> of the party over there. Collateral damage. I kind of burst out laughing while I was recording this because it was so random. <laughs> But yes, the bonus that the uh, Kilocorn Grand Depths gets for its Enrage is that it actually has an HP regeneration, which I think is 2% every 5 seconds or something like that, so it's barely even relevant. And yeah, there goes Noah dying to the uh, smash attack that I mentioned, so I swap over to Mio so that I can keep controlling someone, and honestly Zephyr's probably going to do a better job because it's going to have a better agility, I say, as Mio also dies. <laughs> Man, this victim fucker up. I think Ryuho probably has the highest agility, or maybe it's dexterity, out of uh, all of the super bosses, which makes sense as a bird. So, you know, not that big of a surprise, but it's uh, it's definitely hitting harder than most of the other guys. I know it's really cliche and dirty to be like, oh, imagine if these things were part of the story, uh, the enemy would last a second, but it is so funny to imagine this thing flying into Origin while Z's in the middle of one of his speeches and just carrying him away like a baby. That's one of the funniest things about one of the super bosses in the base game is that it is literally a level 105, I think, mech on. And of course... They say that the Yaldabaoth is the strongest Necon ever built. And then you do Makata's core, and it's like, oh, here's this other thing that's way stronger somehow. <laughs> Wait a minute, where the hell did that come from? 
And so we have a special thing here. You might have found this uh, on your own exploration at some point, but there's a trick gate here that you have to solve a puzzle in order to open. I don't remember if we showed these off in the playthrough at all, but here's uh, how you solve this particular puzzle if you want to know how to do it. I found one of these, I think. Yes, this is deep in the lower Mac the Wildwood, and of ah. course there's a dragon here, level 105, the Dreadworm Nizunt, which uh, in the Japanese is titled Cruel Dragon Nilsvint, which is probably, if I had to guess, German. I apologize if I'm uh, finding the wrong nationality for that name or word, but uh, not quite as interesting as Wings of Disaster or Million Horned Grand Eps. So. No, not at all. Uh, I have heard some interesting things about what we get for beating this dude. Yes, yeah, the people in the comments did mention that there's uh, a special thing up on the ledge behind this guy, but you'll see uh, when we get there. Um, this guy has one major gimmick, and it's that he has an art that can make himself invincible for about five seconds, which is really annoying because I had him do that immediately before I triggered a chain attack one time. Oh, spa. And it's just everything is hitting for zero damage. It was kind of funny at the time. <laughs> This is actually the only point in the whole game where climbing a ladder, as there's vines that you can climb to get up to that ledge, climbing the ladder does not de-aggro this enemy, because if you remember any other point when you climb onto a ladder, any enemies will instantly de-aggro. Right. They actually had to apply a patch to this boss, because people were just running in and grabbing the ladder to get up to the ledge and ignoring the boss entirely. Well Acknowledge me! I'm dreaded! <laughs> I'm the zoot! So this guy, uh, when he maxes out his challenge level, gets up to level 170, and he was kind of tough. He's got the, you know, fire-breathing attack that most dragons have. Also, that heat scream that renders him invincible sure makes it harder to, you know, keep up with stuff. Uh, he also has, um... Another of the typical dragon attacks, which is crushing playbite, or something like that, that will almost certainly one-hit kill whoever it hits, even your defenders. Oh. Yeah, there's that fire attack, which usually applies a blaze, but I think our Sinophers had set up to uh, prevent those debuffs from sticking, so that was good. I just love the sound of all of the buffs activating at once, and they just layer over each other. <laughs> uh, like I said, I'm not going to be doing any chain attacks for these fights. Um, I wanted to show off the fights as they were, and not just have five rounds of doing the same chain attack over and over. So uh, all of these guys I'm going to be fighting mostly normally. I love how at the end of the fight he just starts walking away like, fuck this, I'm done. <laughs> Dude, I am 105 and I don't need this. At 1% HP, he goes invincible, because of course he does. Hey, I can wait as long as you can. <laughs> and as soon as it wears off... Dead. There he goes. <laughs> Alright, let's go see what our reward is. Sadly, I already know, but I want to see it pop up on screen. Like I said, someone in the uh, comments did mention it, which is fine, you know. People are allowed to talk about stuff. <laughs> yeah, I thought I missed something. That's why I went searching. Yes, there is a biter. And if you recognize it, it is Ricky's default biter from the start of when he appears in Xenoblade 1. This is um, the legendary biter. And it actually has the effect as an accessory of uh, gradually increasing the aggro of whoever wears it uh, and it's the highest level of that effect that any accessory has. Kind of weird for a Ricky effect, but you know, whatever. I missed the legendary hero pod. Thankfully, his, um... Well, I think his bloodline should still be going strong. Like, I don't know, like... Obviously, Kino was adopted, but he had, uh, Riku as the fairy we're going on. But there was also Nene and a bunch of other kids, so... Yeah, I think we came to the consensus, at least between the two of us, that Riku was Kino's child. 
uh, because they had the connection of, you know, being able to tinker with electronics and stuff. Uh, so the next super boss that we're going to is way over here, and I know you found this one too because you posted it on Twitter, uh -huh. if I recall correctly. This is over here. Uh, this area is actually called the Aegis Sea. I don't know how it specifically connects to the Aegis in terms of Xenoblade 2. I think it's just a name. <laughs> there is. Nice. And unfortunately, in this case, we do actually have to swim all the way over to him. Uh, there's actually no landmark over on that beach. Once you defeat the unique monster, you get a warp point over there for the gravestone. But uh, th this is my first time clearing all these super bosses on this save file. So I'm obviously not going to have that. But uh, as we get closer, this is the Levia Lord Imperio. In Japanese, the title is Supreme Sea Dragon Imperio. And I think both of those are honestly just about as cool as each other. Neither one of those is really any better. Oh my god, look at him. Yeah, he's uh, he kind of is ends up being bigger than what you think when you're further away, huh? <laughs> he's honestly kind of menacing as well, like the red coloring. It reminds me of the uh, red Gyarados, actually. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> While I was rechristening this, the Lake of Rage. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, of course, because he's in the water, you're not going to be able to see a lot of the moment-to-moment uh, -moment stuff that's going on as far as the party, but. You know, that's just kind of how it is. I don't think you can pull this guy over to the land to fight him there. I think you have to be in the water to be close enough to hit him. Right. But as you can see, this guy is level 110. He maxes out at level 180. And actually, this enemy is highly resistant to ether damage and weak to physical. Uh, it was the opposite for the Keelhorn Grandseps. He was highly resistant to physical damage and weak to ether. And I didn't really take advantage of that because I... Uh, didn't go read the wiki on these things until after I had recorded this. Oh, spa. So if you want to fight the Grand Ups in the best way possible, you would probably want to go with like a Full Metal Jaguar, because it's the highest ether damage uh, class. Right. And for this one, since we're highest physical damage, you would go with like Seraph or Incursor, like I've got over there on lands, like I said. And I think I actually had Miyabi as my hero slot uh, for the first couple, but I switched over to Fiona. I'm not sure why I really picked one or the other. I think one of them may have had a bonus that reduces block rate that I wanted to use on Grand Eps, and that might be why I went for that. Splendid. Without the gimmick, this guy's pretty normal. The uh, boss in Future Redeemed that has the sleep is one of this type of enemy. He's a, a water snake dragon thing. I like how you can kind of see... It almost looks like there's a bit of a cave that goes down into the water because there's like a line that you can see in the water that's going through the foam or whatever. Uh. It just looks like that's just the deeper part of the water as he got smashed down. Maybe that's where it lives. Could be, yeah. I would honestly call this probably one of the easiest super bosses. It's uh, just really easy to dodge most of his attacks. The setup that I have here is that I have, at least when I'm not using Lucky 7, of course, I have attacks that will guarantee that I dodge. Um, stuff like Wide Slash from Zephyr uh, has a guaranteed evade during the animation of the attack, and if you set it as uh, one of your bonus arts, and you mix it with something that has a long animation like Gale Slash, you get the guaranteed evade throughout the entire long animation. So that's actually a great way to take advantage of that. Wow, yeah, you weren't kidding. Four out of five. Four down, and there's actually one thing that we need to go pick up before we go find the fifth one. There's actually a bit of info in the city to go discuss as I go pick up these items for some reason. <laughs> Ooh, well, you can never have too many items. Our special foot wraps so we can go pee, uh, Sonic Boom, I guess. <laughs> Ugh. Sorry. Bad members. <laughs> yeah, so we gotta head over here. I think you might have picked up this particular info during the playthrough. I can't recall. But, uh, it's over there towards the war room, but up the elevator, so... 
Uh, I chose to teleport here so that I could be running instead of just waiting in an elevator, I guess. <laughs> Fair enough. It is nice to just kind of run through the city and see all of these NPCs that I have not spoken to and all the info that I did not grab because this is a New Game Plus file. <laughs> and I did not need to grab those. Fair enough. I will sit and see for now then. This is just uh, another version of not grabbing the treasure chest in KH2. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yep, so we have to go to the cavity, I believe it's called, the empty space that was left when the city itself moved. But uh, we have to go discuss this info that we got first, so let's head over to the camp and do that. Okay, hopefully I can voice that fast enough. Yeah, unfortunately this is pre-recorded, so you're going to have to read it fast enough to keep up with the past spar. <laughs> All right, here we go. Could you all come around for a second? We got really strong, didn't we? Yes, what brought this on? Senna and I were just having a chin whack. We've taken down some tough monsters, yeah? And not like a couple, but loads. Right? We've beaten monsters all the way up and down, Ionios. Every enemy we met, we annihilated. I'm pretty sure we can take on anything the world throws at us. And? You know the Great Sword where the city was? Folks are saying there's a mega, super strong monster there. Can we go and test ourselves against it? Try and smack it around a bit? Please, Mimi, can we? Uh, are you sure? It's like we said, ain't no mother in the world holds a candle to us now. That's right, Mimi. I believe it is so much. Tyon, say something. Don't look at me. I don't speak meathead. My muscles thrum with anticipation. An eager fire is burning inside me. Uh, I haven't said yes yet. And that's all we need to do despite no one actually coming to a consensus as to what is being done. That's all you have to do for the yeah. final super boss to appear. And like I said, we have to head back to Sword March and the Empty Cavity. Uh, there's a gravestone over here that's closer to where we're going, so I chose that instead of the landmark. Alright, I've seen a little bit of this because I did skim through the footage, but not the actual fight, so I'm interested to see how this goes. Yeah, it's actually kind of fascinating um, the way they set up the super boss. I won't spoil it for those that don't know, but this is probably the coolest thing that the series has done with the super boss to date. Just got to run down here. Like I said, we are in the empty cavity where the city was originally, or at least at the start of the game. I think you could actually look out from the balconies and see a lot of this area that's down here, but it's uninhabited at the time, obviously. Right. Just a little bit further. Here we go. Oh. The super uh, boss is so is cool. Really right he gets his own Could voiced intro cutscene. Yeah, it's just a rumor. No big deal it's kind of cool. I like it. Uh, yeah. Note the silence. It's unnaturally quiet. It's like something's waiting. Huh? <laughs> what the? I like this sort of rainbow-colored snowflakes as well. It's a really cool touch. Pretty. Yeah, I don't think you'll be saying that in a second. <laughs> Sparks! What's going on? Oh, can't even... <gasps> oh, boy. Thanks. Behind you. Huh? Oh. <laughs> That's everyone with their upgraded weapons that was shown there, by the way. I don't recognize this monster type. Is this wholly unique? It's incredibly unique, yes. It is specifically this monster. And he even has his own music theme. It does not play You Will Know Our Names third version or whatever it's called. 
actually has his own specific music. Oh man, it's like a peacock dinosaur. This is the Seraphic Ciritinia, who in the Japanese name is titled Ciritinia, Divine Beast of the Burning Skies, which is the rawest Ooh. thing that has ever been titled in Xenoblade Unique Boss. I'm hooting, I'm hollering! <laughs> This guy is level 120, which matches the highest super boss from Xenoblade 1. I don't know about the super bosses in Xenoblade 2. I didn't actually do those when I played the game. But this is the boss that maxes out at challenge level 200, so we'll be fighting this one again after this. But uh, he's also pretty hard, I would say. He's probably not the hardest. I'd still say Ryuho, for whatever reason, is harder, at least at the base level that you fight them at. Uh, he has the Ultra Play Bite, this transient bond attack that uh, sends out his rainbow scales to attack everyone. You can actually pick up that art as uh, Triton's class, uh, as an art that you can use. By the way, I don't know if you've noticed whenever Noah is using the Lucky 7, I actually have the Monado equipped as the glamour over the, uh, the sword. And it appears even when not using the Sword Fighter class. I didn't actually. I'm too focused on this frigate here and wondering when the city was here. Were they in danger this whole time? I don't really know because it's not explained when this thing really appeared. I'm really glad that I managed to stop that Ultra Play Bite because, like I said, that attack is really strong and could do tons of damage even to defenders. Sin is putting in work with those breaks though. Every time I do a smash combo, and I think I mentioned this uh, previously during the playthrough, the enrage timer actually gets closer. So the more smashes you do, the faster the enrage happens. And if you do a burst, it actually knocks him out of the enrage mode temporarily. But uh, we're going for damage here. We're not going for safety. Safety's for pansies. Oh, yes. Just throw caution to the wind here. <laughs> Someone's dead. It's Fiona. Noah also died. I kind of forgot that he died here as well. So once again, I just swap over to Mio and keep playing, and Mio honestly does great. Equipped with Ashira's talent art because it's the best defender talent art, it only needs two uh, actions to fill in to have the talent art usable, and it's a uh, 700% damage ratio and it increases the aggro you gain from using it. So you can just keep spamming the talent art over and over, Blossom Dance. So at this point it's kind of just dealing with the attacks that make it through all of the Cynifer buffs and, you know, just basically getting all my damage in. I think the main reason that I uh, had Noah die back there was because Uni and Tyon went into Ouroboros form, so my sign of her buffs kind of fell off. Ah, so it was on purpose that you have Noah die. Sure, let's put it that way. <laughs> Once again, I would recommend if anyone wants to take on the super bosses to turn off the um, auto Ouroboros thing in the menu and make it so that you have to select when your party members go into Ouroboros form because it just means you can control what the party members are doing much easier. Well, you seem to be doing fun so far, though. Yeah, I uh, had a couple like character deaths in the party, but for the most part, things are just not getting through all of those signer for buffs, and that's really, like I said, I don't know how you're meant to fight these things without Sinefer or uh, Triton's class, which is like even more broken if you have all of the arts that you can gain as well. Mm -hmm. Something we'll have to take into account for the final post-game video. Oh yes. I have things to say about many of the consoles and it uh, happens that Triton is a console and a party member, or at least a hero, so there's a lot to talk about there. Oh. <laughs> I like the just one second clip of it screaming at the end. <laughs> She's like, ah! Oh! Very cool, very cool. And crossfade. Got ready for this, guys? Oh boy, here we go, here we fucking go. Alright, I had to spend a lot of time doing this 
in order to get uh, an even remotely decent recording. And this one starts off with Nia, who I have as my uh, hero for this one, dying. So, you know, off to a great start here. I'm actually going to be controlling Tyon as a sign of her for a while because I really want to make sure all the buffs are set up as quickly as possible. You do not fuck around with level 200. That was actually such an amazingly clutch topple that stopped him from doing that attack because that dash attack will kill basically anyone that's not a defender. And I had many recordings that lasted five seconds and had Tyon die instantly. Yes, die on. <laughs> uh, because he would just get hit by the dash attack and just die on the first hit. Did you just wave a flag at me? How rude. So at this point, I really want to just make sure I'm set up for a proper chain attack because I don't want to sit here fighting level 200 for, you know, the entire fight. I'm actually going to do a chain attack this time because I'm not that much of a masochist. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. But I really want him to get launched first, so I'm kind of waiting for that combo to go through. nice evade there. I'm not sure if that was Noah using an art with guaranteed evasion or if that was an evasion from a Cynifer buff, but regardless, no one got hit with it, so it's cool. That charge could probably take out any console barring X, Y, Z or N. It could probably take out those too, depending on how the rules of this world work. I guess I didn't wait for the launch. It was more important to... Oh, I got a break. That's why. That's why I went directly into the chain attack, because I can do it from here. Yes, yes, we can do it during the chain attack. There's the topple. And I believe Noah has the launch art. Alright, and now his defense is essentially set to zero. So I don't have to worry about that. Sign of her to get all my buffs spread across everywhere again. And now we go to town. Aerial Slash with Hidden Thorn is just about the highest damage you can get on Incursor. That was over a million just from that one art. Or that one fusion art, at least. I am waiting with bated breath to see this dude's health bar just melt away. So, of course, I want to pick Uni and Tyon to get the super good Ouroboros finish. If you recall, Uni's Ouroboros form and Tyon's, if you spread the skill, get a damage buff depending on how many buffs that your party has. And when you have a Cynifer, you can get a lot of buffs. So that's a really great way to just get a huge damage increase on your Ouroboros finisher. And I'm going to finish this particular round with Nia, because when you finish a round with Nia, she reactivates every other party member except for her, so that I get everyone back for the next round. I was a little bit worried because she already had healers left, but then I realized, like, heroes are a different kettle of fish. And so I actually got uh, unlucky, sadly, that I did not get Nia to show up uh, for her chain order, so I actually only get three rounds for this chain attack, which is a bit sad, but uh, you know what? Let's let's just see how it goes for me. Okay. Feel like you already know, Spawn. You just lead him up. Well, I say I got three rounds. Obviously, I got three rounds and the Ouroboros round, so it's not going to be finished here just yet. That was a little under three million damage from that fusion arc. It's actually really terrible to have Uni or Tyon as your Cynifer if you want to use their Ouroboros finisher because uh, Tyon's chain order actually uses up the power charge that he has. Right. So I actually have to reapply it from Uni now to be able to get power charge on everyone. That spreads the attack up buff to everyone. And now Uni will. Oh no, because I want to do the Smash Art. With Noah, that's why I did that. God damn! I probably should have gone for the power charge with Uni. I don't know why I didn't. I like how Uni's weapon was just in the frame blocking Dion. Little paper fellas coming at ya! 
And with the final hit, he's down. Well, fuck it, dog mate. Wow. That was honestly not a really good chain attack, but it got the job done, so who cares? <laughs> it did he so, and that was the Super Buff Showcase for Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Join us next time for the final post-game vid, the console countdown. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.